I feel like there's not much I can say about Celeste in a reviewing sense that hasn't been said before. It's an incredibly fun and challenging game that's definitely worth your time, but I think it goes far beyond its gameplay in terms of significance, so I figured I'd make a slightly different kind of video. I've been playing video games for as long as I can remember. I listen to video game soundtracks instead of regular pop songs. I'm trying to make a career out of making videos on YouTube about video games. Hell, I even made a 30 minute long video for a high school project where I compared the ideas and themes of the person Persona series to English literature. Damn, I'm a loser. <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to say is that I care about video games a lot. Over the years, I always wondered if the ideas held about video games by older generations and mass media would ever fade. They're always constantly watched by the public eye, with everyone waiting to latch onto the newest controversy. They receive so much criticism that they've been fairly suppressed in the mainstream up until very recently. Sure, they may be violent movies, TV shows, and constant depictions of violence in popular culture and on the news, but well, a new study finds a link between violent games and aggressive behavior in children. There is a clear, unequivocal link. Violent actions go up. Or is an entire generation being trained and desensitized to the act of shooting people? Their interactivity and uniqueness as a medium make video games the perfect scapegoat for violence, shootings, and negative trends, especially here in America. To most people, they're just a waste of time. It's generally acceptable to be a critic or reviewer of other types of entertainment, but oh, you play video games for a living? They sit on a couch for months and months and then we all have to pick up the tab on Obamacare because they never left their house for 17 years. It's a game. That's not a sport. That's not a sport. That's not a sport. Not a sport. It's not a real sport. We're talking about the 20 million people who are watching the damn thing. And the money they that gotta they're be making. crazier than and the ones who big money to watch it. What I'm getting at here is that it's depressing when video games receive this kind of attention. It maintains their silent negative stigma when you talk to someone that isn't familiar with them. But when you get past that initial barrier, there's so much more more to be found, and that's where a game like Celeste comes in. Celeste is an incredibly powerful case for how video games can serve as truly artistic experiences that deliver emotions and ideas that no other genre of entertainment can provide. These kinds of games don't come around every day, and it takes a team dedicated to conveying a specific kind of emotion and feeling instead of searching for a profit to bring about something like it. The story of Celeste is something that I connected with on a very personal level, and something that I think a lot of people, regardless of age, can use to both understand depression and come to terms with their own fears and anxieties. As the main character, Madeline, climbs Celeste Mountain, she is confronted with the physical manifestation of her depression and fear. This fear torments her throughout her journey, causing panic attacks along with immense feelings of doubt. The story is told without any voice acting other than some really cute little Animal Crossing-esque noises, and uses a relatively small amount of dialogue. It is told through every facet of the game. Feelings are woven through its atmosphere, music, sound design, and the gameplay itself, with the level design and challenge being representative of Madeline's inner and outer struggles. This is where I think the power of video games as an artistic medium really puts itself on display. No other entertainment genre can immerse the viewer quite like a game can. Sure, you might be able to relate to the main character of a movie or imagine yourself in their shoes, but to physically control them and make decisions and feel the outcome of your actions and choices adds a whole new level of meaning. To feel your own successes and failures rather than simply viewing those of another really changes the way that these ideas impact you. Go ahead. Go try to play one of Celeste's b-sides without getting really angry at least once. Ah! Uh, what? Ah! Uh, uh, oh my god, no! Now, I might be getting a little too deep with my symbolism here, but I think that a puzzle platformer is the perfect game genre to tell the story of Celeste. Both you, the player, and Madeline have to make the conscious decision to get back up and try again. Sure, she may be facing anxiety while climbing a mountain, and you're just eating snacks and thinking about throwing your controller across the room, but as you listen to the music and get immersed in the atmosphere of Celeste's world, you become Madeline and empathize with her struggles, and it makes you that much more invested in the game itself. You might fail over and over and over again, but it's up to you to make the decision to keep going or to give up. Even if you have to make that decision... 434 times, my god, maybe I just suck at this game. I'm also making this video just to have an excuse to talk about this game's music, which is incredible. It contains exciting and overwhelming tracks for the story's toughest and most action-packed moments, and complements them with beautiful piano melodies for when things calm down. It conveys the feelings that Madeline has along her journey, with songs of excitement, anxiety, and accomplishment. I could talk about every stage in this game, and about the meaning of its collectibles, characters, artwork, and everything else in between, but 
I don't want this video to drag on for too long, so I'd rather just say this. Go play this game. I want everyone to experience this game in some way, because it's so much more than just a game. Even if you can't get past the first level, listen to the soundtrack, watch a playthrough, experience the story. If you play it, you might die a hell of a lot trying, and as you're about to throw your controller across the room again at that stupid wind level where you die like 5 billion times, the game tells you to just breathe. In the end, I don't really care about the future of video games outside of the people who appreciate them. As long as they stay around, they'll continue to mean so much to everyone who plays them in so many unique ways. For me, Celeste was a reminder of why I play video games. As Madeline learns to cope with her mental illness and overcome life's hardships, so too does the player. It serves as a reminder to keep fighting for the feelings of friendship and accomplishment you can find along the way. Thank you.